Hey Dungebags, what's going on? It's Landon Remixes here, and welcome back to another edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. And I haven't done one of these in quite some time, but I've really been missing it, and uh, I think I've missed about 10 albums or something, and I actually cleared my list down a bit. Basically, I've just missed a lot of albums that I wanted to cover in reviews, uh, like the new Mode Step record, which is the first one I want to talk about. Yeah, I basically just missed a lot of albums and I wanted to cover them in some way, but that's what this series is for, to cover up uh, all the records that I didn't really get time to review or have enough interest in to talk about a lot. And that's not the case in all of these, but in most of these will be ones that I didn't have very high opinions of, so if you really don't like opinionated reviews, I'd suggest you get off now. Like I said, the first of the bunch is Mode Step's sophomore album, London Road. I can't say I was hyped for this album, but it was just one of those albums that I, I thought I was going to uh, get kind of a unique feel out of and that I was going to actually really enjoy. Um, I found out about it a few months ago, had it marked on my calendar, and I basically just missed the mark. It came out, I didn't even listen to it until about the week after, and I wasn't too impressed when I did listen to it, and I couldn't really even, I didn't have a good time trying to get through this record, and uh, ended up having to preview most of it because it ended up just getting fairly boring. Uh, the intro is really awesome. The intro called Damien that they made with dubstep producer Funt Case. That one's really awesome. There's a few other good ones like the track Machines, there's a collab with Teddy Killers on here, and there's some work with Trolley Snatcher too. And I think, for the most part, most of these collaborations are very solid, but uh, on a lot of these tracks, which Mode Step is taking a solo route, what we end up getting is just a fairly generic uh, hard rock metal sound, and uh, although I do like it in small doses, it gets very old hearing that Mode Step sound. Uh, throughout the whole album, and I don't think I can give this record higher than a solid 5, because it's about half good, half bad, in my opinion. Uh, half of it's fairly generic or repetitive, and the other half is pretty interesting drum and bass. We get a lot of different diversity in uh, basically the very beginning and the very end of this album, but toward the middle there's just a very large chunk that's very hard to get through. Now here's something I'd like to switch up a little bit. I'm actually including uh, one of my favorites from this year uh, is the debut album from Jamie XX called In Color. And uh, Jamie XX is the producer from The XX. I wasn't a huge fan of them, but I'm trying to get into them now that I've heard this record. Uh, a lot of this record is very, very solid. And Your EDM kind of hyped this up and raved it, uh, called it perhaps a contender for album of the year. I honestly don't think it's quite that high because there are a few tracks that kind of toned it down a little bit for me, but for the most part this record is pretty fantastic and phenomenal. Gosh works pretty bad as a uh, kickoff track, which is part of the reason that turned me away from this album initially, but after I got it I realized that Basically, the middle chunk of the album is very, very solid. Uh, Jamie collaborates with some of the members of the XX, uh, Oliver Sim and Romy. Like I said, the beginning of Gosh is uh, fairly bland, but we get a little bit into it, and it gets kind of uh, into maybe a little C418 sound, and we get a lot of different styles. That, and I'm kind of having feelings toward this record the same that I had on John Hopkins' album Immunity, which is one of my favorite albums ever. If he probably would have just cut a couple tracks out of this, there's 11 tracks on this, John Hopkins' album only had 8, so I kind of understand. If he would have chopped a couple tracks out of this, maybe made a uh, gosh, a little more intro-y and a little less just kind of stick you in the techno, then this album would have been a 10 out of 10 for me. But because of tracks like I Know There's Gonna Be Good Times, Hold Tight, and the intro of Gosh, uh, this album didn't fully live up to its full potential for me. Uh, a lot of people are, are digging, I know there's going to be good times, but to me it just sounds like kind of every other song on the radio. Uh, there's a few tracks that have that deep house bass line in the back and that fairly generic R&B style and a uh, little bit of hip hop and that's kind of the worst track on the album for me, although people are enjoying it. I really do like this album though for the most part, I'm going to give it a 8.5. Next up is the newest record from Marabou State, this one's called Portraits. And uh, for the most part, I got the same feelings that I got with Jamie XX's album. And although I don't want to say this is just like it, it is kind of a blander, toned down version of that album. And I don't want to say that because they're not the same exact thing. In fact, uh, Marabou State and Jamie XX has very different styles uh, as producers. But for the most part, they go off a lot of very similar themes, down-tempo electronic, 
and from what I heard of this album, which I did listen through the whole thing uh, in one time, that's basically what I thought, and I thought I could just follow it up from that album, that it's, uh, you take your expectations and uh, your listen from Jamie XX's album, tone it down a tiny bit, couple points, I'd say, since that's the rating system I'm using, and that's what you get with this album, so I'm going to give it a 6.5. Next up is an album that I thought I was really going to love, but it kind of ended up dying in my mind. Uh, Donny Trumpet and the Social Experiment Surf, and uh, from the sound of the intro of this album, Miracle, I thought I was going to be go crazy over this record. It's got rap elements, live instrumentation, uh, fantastic blaring trumpet lines, and a uh, little bit of R&B style. And Chance the Rapper made a few appearances on this one. People are kind of painting it as a Chance the Rapper album, but it's really not. If anything, it's more Donny Trumpet, uh, who seems to be kind of leading every single track. Uh, I thought I was going to love this. It's a little bit more New Age jazz, but I ended up really only digging a few tracks on this record. And uh, what it turns something that I thought was going to be fantastic, maybe a couple more appearances by chance, although I really only liked one of his appearances on this record, and that was the intro. I think this album could have been a lot better. And uh, critics are actually r raving this album uh, with a lot of good points. Needle Drop Anthony Fantano didn't rate it too high. He actually had fairly similar thoughts to me on this record, although his uh, least favorite tracks are actually some of my favorites on this one. Uh, he just has different tastes than me. I would have liked to love this one. Like I said, critics were raving about this for having live instrumentation and uh, unique blends of genres, but then I noticed that the same critics did not give as positive ratings for the last Skrillex album, which featured Chance the Rapper and so the show Social Experiment. I felt like uh, this album was a little bit of a step in a better direction because I didn't like uh, their collaboration on Skrillex's last album that much, but it was still fairly enjoyable. The same people that gave this album a lot of hype uh, did not give Skrillex enough credit on his last album for including so many varieties of genres, and I just don't see that as such a good thing. Uh, this album was free, obviously, so go and pick it up, at least for the couple good tracks on this one, like Miracle, and I'm going to give this one a solid four. The last one I'm going to talk about is the debut EP by Phoebe Ryan called Mine, and I have to say I was a little disappointed that her collaboration with James Young wasn't on this album. I really did like that one a lot, uh, her duet anyway with him, although I think it was more of his song than hers because his vocals overpower her a little bit. Uh, this EP was fairly solid from the first half. You get into Mine and you get into Dead. These are both very solid songs, and then you get into this kind of bland track, Homie. I wasn't crazy about that, although it still retains some elements that I enjoyed. And then the last track is a mashup cover of Ignition and Do You. And I just really didn't like that one at all. I didn't even realize it was a mashup until the end uh, when I realized that this was a cover of a fairly old song. And uh, in general, I think if she could have just cut out that, cut out Homie, I think this uh, the direction she was going with the first two tracks on this EP could have been really good. But instead, she chooses to step away from that, and I think that's where she went wrong with this EP. The instrumentation is truly awesome on this, but uh, like I said, just gets a little annoying on tracks like Homie. Uh, I'm going to give this one a 5.5 because uh, you know it was a little bit more than half good. Uh, I don't think quite deserving of a 6, and it wasn't exactly half bad, half good, so I just decided to throw it in the middle. There you go, 5.5. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. Uh, let me know if you want to see a little bit more and what albums I should include in my next stuff. I know I've already got a couple suggestions and I'm working on listening through those albums that uh, I haven't had a chance to listen through yet because I've been busy with work and other reviews and things like that. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this edition of Rapid Fire Reviews. I'm Landon Remixes. Peace.